AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge studio. Let's rock! Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR, presented by Decision Critical, a concierge nursing service. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt! Hey, shut up, kid! Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Yes, sir! And Mr. Toby Tomblin. We're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you're driving home with us. Said to be joined by Chris Phillips here. Bottom of this hour, SEC unfiltered, uh, flying into Baton Rouge. Actually, as we speak, supposed to be landing literally right now, joining us in about half an hour. He'll be in that number uh, covering LSU and Ole Miss this weekend for their SEC unfiltered campus tour. Excited to chat with uh, Chris. Got to meet him this last summer at SEC Media Days in Dallas and, um, Campus hopping throughout the season. It'll be in Baton Rouge for the big one Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. Um, we'll have Phil Steele with us tomorrow on the show. Uh, just a bit ago, if you missed it, Elise uh, Sterling uh, has cast his lot for the Rebels. We'll see what Phil Steele says um, on uh, on Friday. It's interesting because there has been a, uh, as I've noticed, there, there has been a little bit of a divide there, but more and more um, sharps, experts, whatever you want to say, uh, tend to um, kind of be leaning toward LSU in the points in this ball game, And I'll continue to say, Lee picked it, I think he said 34-27 Ole Miss, I think was his score. Um, was that his score? Was, I think it was 34-27? 35-28. 35-28. 35 35-28. I could see a, a game where it's a, it's a tie ball game and someone scores late to win by a touchdown margin. Like, that wouldn't surprise me. I just don't think you're going to see a game where one team runs away from the other. Uh, I just think it's it's very look look at I, I've continued to say this all week. LSU Southern Cal in the opener. I mean that was a seven point margin, 27-20. But I mean you you were tied at ten at half. You were tied at twenty with eight seconds to play in the ball game. So I, I just think that's the kind of game that we're in for. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. Normally we do this on uh, on Thursdays in hour number two, but we shuffled a few things. Mike Triplett, who's normally with us in hour three. He had to bump up. So Mike was here an hour ago. If you missed that, you can catch it on demand. Of course, AFR On Demand presented by Brett Golf. Let's do a little uh, what to watch. Here's what we're watching this football weekend. All right. Uh, Muse, Pauly, and I give you three things we're keeping an eye on. Then we come back on Monday and tell you how they went. Muse, start us off. Let's start in the NFL uh, this week. Spencer Rattler, not the only rookie quarterback making his first start. Drake May is as well for the New England Patriots. They'll take on the uh, Houston Texans. Obviously a very good defense uh, down there in Houston. Want to see how Drake May fares. This is not surprising. The Patriots were not going to go through their entire season with Jacoby Brissett as quarterback. The only surprising thing is it took till week six. We'll see how he does. I'll be watching Texas, Oklahoma. This will be the first meeting as SEC members. When they meet Saturday, this will be the four, first time in 40 years that Texas will play this rivalry game as a number one team. Ooh! How about that? Good number, Paulie. Quinn Ewers will get the start. Hi. Uh, Oklahoma will be starting true freshman quarterback Michael Hawkins, who won his first start against Auburn. The Longhorns have never lost to Oklahoma as a number one team. How about road favorites in the NFL this weekend? It's rare that you see this, but 10 of the 14 games this weekend feature a road favorite, including tonight with San Francisco at Seattle. And then also on Monday Night Football to wrap up the week with Buffalo at the Jets. Uh, Teams like Green Bay um, uh, favored at home over Arizona. Chicago 
favored at home over Jacksonville. Tennessee's favored at home over Indy. We mentioned Baltimore as well, but uh, golly, you look at like uh, Philly. Uh, excuse me, Philly is the uh, Philly and Baltimore. But it's a uh, pretty heavily weighted weekend toward road teams. We'll see if they can, uh, can get it done. Be road warriors this weekend in the NFL. To the college ranks, Kansas State is on the road to Colorado this week. This is interesting for a bunch of different reasons, but mainly Colorado. This is a big prove-it spot for them. They've really kind of already started doing that. 2-0 in the Big 12, few undefeated, uh, one of few undefeated teams left there. They're coming off of a bye, one of their stiffest tests. But if they get this done, you start to talk about Colorado as a real contender in the Big 12. All right, so don't laugh. All right. I'm going Jaguars, Bears. No, I'm laughing. <laughs> That's <laughs> why. You know, you sent that on the text line earlier. So we, we text each other what our what to watch is our, so we don't overlap. And I saw that. I'm like, Polly, why the hell? What, what do you, what is, I mean, I'm thinking, is this just like battle of former number one quarterbacks? Is that what it is? No. So the Jaguars are London bound. Yeah. Two weeks stay again. Okay. So they did this last year. This will be, let's see. Their fourth consecutive season playing in London, and their 11th season out of the last 12 playing in London. Yeah, I mean, they have that agreement because they don't sell tickets in their home stadium. So they go play in London, so then they get money to do it, and they get international exposure and all. I get it. I mean, if you're not going to you're not gonna sell not gonna sell out your stadium, go go to a place where you are going to sell tickets. That's the thing. And they're yeah, pretty much why the they London have this agreement. at this point. But they're 6-5 uh, they're and five all time in London. Eh. What a season saver. For Cincinnati, potentially. Uh, this is the Sunday night football game. We know the Bengals' struggles. They're one and four. They've not been a good football team, as Joe Burrow said, and everyone has been piling on them. The problem is that they've been really close. And I'll tell you honestly, a big reason why I'm keeping such a close eye on this is Cincinnati was my Super Bowl team this year, as it was for, I think, a lot of people. But I would desperately love to see Cincinnati go win this football game. They are a road favorite in this ball game against the Giants. And it is a primetime game in Sunday Night Football. We'll see if uh, if, the, um, uh, if the Bengals can get done on the road. This would be a season saver. If you fall to one in five, I just don't see a path out. America's team, the Vanderbilt Commodores. Amen to that. Yes, heroes. indeed. Heroes. If there were still those Bud Light commercials, the real real American heroes, the real men of genius, yep. I would really love one on the Vanderbilt Commodores. Today. Yeah, I mean, you know, look. I mean, real men of genius. Let's say we have, we have a deal with Mockler. You should just cut one yourself. I mean, American heroes. No. Vanderbilt. Uh, we've Mr. talked Alabama Dominator. I, kinda, I like that. Cheers to you, Mr. Alabama Dominator. The eviscerator of the elephant. Keep going. Yeah, I, I, mean, yeah, I, think, I, mean, yeah, I think this could work. Uh, I've talked a lot about Vanderbilt here in these What to Watch and the College Football Takeaways, mainly because they are better than a lot of people think. And they just kept screwing up, getting their third win, and then all Big of a sudden, pile of elephant dung. all of a sudden, they do it against against uh, Alabama. That was one of our what to watch last week. Was a potential Bama letdown. Well, now potential Vandy letdown. They have to go to Kentucky, who also might be better than we think. I mean, Diego Pavia was tweeting out his agent's phone number earlier this week. It took until Wednesday for Clark Lee to finally say, "Hey, we're not talking about Alabama anymore. It's onward." They're right for a letdown against Kentucky. Let's keep an eye on it. Hey, remember last week when we were doing this segment, you asked about if uh, I do maybe a little trap spot. Remember what I said? You said print. Yeah, you, you were like, absolutely do it. Told uh, you said it was going to be clipped as well. I hope I still have it. Hmm. Hmm. I will find it. It's on my phone somewhere. All right, Paulie, go. I'm watching the Lions, Cowboys, Liar. NFC showdown that could impact playoff seating down the road. Uh, Cowboys coming off back-to-back wins, following back-to-back losses. Lions are coming off their bye. Jared Goff completed all 18 of his passes two weeks ago against Seattle. Uh, Cowboys looking to get their running game going with Rico Dowell and Zeke. I demand that one of you find that clip. It's in here somewhere. I don't know. You said it in the text chain, didn't you? That's what I thought you did. I mean, at least... There we go. No, oh, there it is. Got it. Oh, there you go. See, there you go. You got it. Turn the music down. All right. Is there any ounce of a letdown for Alabama this week against yep. Vanderbilt? Trap game, Muse. 
Book it, Muse. You trap game at Vanderbilt Stadium. You know what you're walking into, Bama. You better not sleep on the doors. They beat Virginia Tech. They were a shank field goal away from beating Missouri in Como. They, they should have beat Georgia State, too. Tread lightly there, Bammers. You know what you're with. Nobody just walks all over Clark Lee, Diego Pavia, and the doors. They're going to be ready, Muse. Oh, it, they're going to be ready. In all seriousness, you, you I want... can't wait for that clip to be put on Twitter by Marler have... and it get 400,000 views. There it is. There you go. How about it. I mean, we, we were on it. Nobody uh, else we was on it. We were on it. I was it on was it. my what to watch. You just said, oh, is it? I'm the one who made the bold declarative statement. You asked a question. I answered it. That's how you posed the question. And then I went into the analysis after you gave yours. We were on it. You gave me no analysis whatsoever. I did. I gave bold declarative statements. You asked a question. I nailed it, Muse. Yeah, we were on it. I was on it. And yeah, we were on it. What's your last one? I was all over Vanderbilt and a trap game for Alabama. I got the audio. Where's your audio of it? I mean, I, I was, yeah, I was part of that audio. It, yeah, was, it, was, it was literally my what to watch. Yeah, your what to watch was a question. The, yeah, because we haven't watched it yet. Yeah, so you didn't say so this is going to be a so trap game. I it. answered it before it happened. You asked a question. It's I also just not even it the full not clip. Been. It could have not been a letdown spot. It's not even the full clip. It could have not been a letdown spot. Then let me hear. Let me hear your take on it. I don't have the rest yeah, of the exactly. clip right now. Bingo. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were on it. What's uh, your also, last? Also, no, I was on it we again. On it. I don't have a clip of you saying that, saying anything declarative like I did. The uh, Jets, they got a new head coach. I don't know if you know that. Saw that. Um, and I had the Jets winning the division you this did. year, uh, and they stink right now. They do. And so I would like for their new coach to not stink. Well. So when we come back here at the end of the season, they can win a division, which is a very winnable division, by the way. Fair. Still very winnable. Yep. The Patriots are atrocious. They're awful. Miami stinks. They're awful. And if Buffalo goes and loses to the Giants this week, I mean, I, there's a... Wait, is Buffalo playing? Wait, I, no. think, I think the no, Bills are on bye, actually, no, no, this week. The, right? No, 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 no. The, the Bills are playing... Um, uh, Bills are playing... Uh, oh, the, the Bills are playing the Jets. I know uh, they're, they're playing in New York. Cincinnati's playing the Giants. There's back-to-back -back games in New York in prime time. Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football are both at MetLife this week. It's Bengals at Giants on Sunday night and then Bills at Jets Monday night. So, yes, uh, it's big. It's a big one because it's a divisional game and you can prove that you're going to be awesome and hopefully I can be right again like that like I was about the, uh, the letdown for Alabama going to Vanderbilt and getting popped. It's after further review. That's our what to watch. We'll watch it all this weekend. We'll come back on Monday and talk about how it all went. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're hanging out with us here. We're brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Energy efficient replacement windows, beautiful entry doors, hardy plank, vinyl siding. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well. It's over at Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Go check them out online. You can always schedule that consultation to go into their corporate headquarters. Beautiful place, by the way, if you've never been. Airline in Prairieville. If you're going south, you cross Highway 42, quarter mile on the right. You can't miss it. By the way, they service the entire Gulf South. So, yeah, while their corporate headquarters right there on Airline in Prairieville, they service people all from, from Orange and from Beaumont, Texas, all the way east to Tallahassee, Florida, everywhere in between. Give them a shout-out, Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Windows, doors, siding. Oh, yeah, they do shutters as well. ReliefWindows.com. Okay, uh, y'all, glad to have you hanging out with us here. We'll get to Chris Phillips, SEC Unfiltered, in about 15 minutes from right now. Otter locks are already posted. Uh, the baseball game, uh, first pitch of the baseball game was at 5 p.m., so that should be, I'm looking to see if we have any early score on it. That should be underway. Uh, no score right now, Guardians and Tigers. The Otter uh, Otter locks for that game and for Thursday night football are up at the uh, at uh, louisianasports.net. So if you want to catch those, you can right now at louisianasports.net, or you can wait till Otter's with us here in half an hour. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. Man, it is a great time to get by Clegg's Nursery, y'all. Woke up this morning. I mean, it is just fall is smacking you in the face when you wake up and go outside right now. Those temperatures in the high 50s, low 60s. This is the time to decorate for fall. Time to break out those earth tones, those browns and dark greens, oranges and yellows. It is an awesome time for fall. And nobody has a better selection of all of your fall decor than Clegg's Nursery. You can get by any of the four locations. Segan Air Airline, LA-16 in Denham, Mid-City on Donmore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. If you're looking for pumpkins, all different sizes and colors, they got them. 
You want hay bales and squash and gourds and scarecrows and witches and all that good stuff. They got the best selection at all of the Clegg's Nursery locations. So get by and see them today. If you need those fall bedding plants, Johnny Naylor seeds, our friends at Clegg's Nursery have you covered. Buy local, shop local at Clegg's Nursery. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing. Healthcare for your lifestyle. Learn more at decisioncriticalbr.com. Hey, Monday, we had our watch party for Saints Chiefs over at LaBerge and uh, our friends over at Mockler Beverage. I mean, they're amazing partners. Uh, Bud Light, of course, the official beer of the LSU Tigers, official beer of the Saints, and the official beer of AFR. Um, And our friends at Mockler, local company, that have been been great partners for ours. And every time they have uh, tickets to Darnie or anything, they come to me and say, Matt, do you want to do these and give them away to your audience? And of course, I'll always do that. I'll always do giveaways here and give you all opportunities to win great stuff. So uh, we had a pair of tickets for the LSU game this weekend against Ole Miss. And then we also had... uh, Bud Light Lounge tickets for the Saints-Rams game coming up uh, in the Dome here in a bit. And so uh, we have our, our winners that uh, have been notified, but we want to announce on air. So the uh, the LSU tickets this weekend were won by Melissa Cook. So Cameron Cook was one of our winners for the Game Watch Party. His plus one was, uh, was Melissa, and she ended up winning the LSU tickets for this weekend. So congrats to Melissa and uh, the Saints-Rams tickets in the Bud Light Lounge. Uh, Matthew Johnson was our winner there. So congrats to our winners. We love being able to do great stuff like that. We appreciate our friends over at Mockler Beverage and our partners there with Bud Light who um, keep giving us these awesome opportunities. I mean, they gave us College World Series tickets. Remember, they gave us sweet tickets when Garth Brooks played in the Superdome. Um, So many LSU tickets that we've been able to give away and do prizes like this and Saints as well. So we appreciate Mockler Beverage and Bud Light. Congrats to our winners there. I'll remind you, if you are looking for tickets, for LSU and Ole Miss this weekend. We do have a contest going on. If you go to 1045ESPN.com, uh, again, courtesy of our friends at Mockler Beverage and Bud Light, they gave us another pair of tickets to give away here on the show. So we'll announce our winner tomorrow. It's not too late to enter. Just go to 1045ESPN.com, right on the homepage. You'll see where you can register to win tickets for LSU Ole Miss. You click, you just fill out the form right there, and we'll announce our winner tomorrow. It's totally drawn. It's total random. You don't have to buy anything or, or anything. It's just going to be a random drawing. Go fill out the form at 1045ESPN.com for an opportunity to win tickets, a pair of tickets to a LSU Ole Miss Saturday in Tiger Stadium. Should be an absolutely awesome atmosphere. We've um, been waiting all year for one like this, for Tiger Stadium to be full throat, night game with the crowd um, ripping and roaring. Should be a great day of tailgate, an awesome environment in and around Tiger Stadium, and hopefully the game lives up to the building there with LSU and Ole Miss Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. Okay, um, it is after further review. You can always text the show on the 225-396-4400, 396 I got a, a text from Bronson earlier. He said, if the Saints fired Dennis Allen, would they make Kubiak the interim head coach, which would then make him a candidate for head coach? Um, so, Maybe. Uh, I think, you know, Sands a, a better, more obvious option at head coach, uh, for interim head coach. And this is very presumptive, by the way. I mean, the Saints typically don't, haven't fired coaches in season and gone the interim route. Um, you know, I, um, the Kubiak thing is interesting because after the first couple of weeks of the season, I got asked this question a good bit where Saints fans were thrilled with how the offense was playing. It was very easy to look at Clint Kubiak and say, okay, we well, have generally the same cast of characters except a weaker offensive line. You know, Hurst retired, Pete's with the Raiders, Ryan Ramchick's injured. But everybody else is the same. You're worse on the line, but everything else is the same, and the offense was was setting records the first two weeks. And it was just very easy to look and say, okay, well, it's Clint, Clint Kubiak. And so the fan reaction quickly became, oh, my God. Like, they're going to be so good, he's going to get a head coaching job next year, and you're going to be right back to where you were. 
And I totally understand that feeling. I mean, it happened in Tampa. I mean, David, Dave Canales kind of got the reputation as the guy who saved Geno Smith in Pittsburgh or in, a, in a Seattle, excuse me, uh, saved Baker Mayfield in Tampa, and then boom, gets the head coaching job after one year in Tampa, gets the head coaching job in Carolina. So we've seen that happen in the NFL. It's a copycat league, and everybody wants a piece of that Shanahan McVay tree offensively. But with the way the offense has skidded the past three weeks, I think maybe a little of the the bloom is off the rose with Kubiak. I don't know if that's necessarily fair. The injuries have been devastating. If you were looking at your coordinators, it would probably make sense that Kubiak would be the guy if they did fire Dennis Allen. I'm not saying they have or will or, or would fire Dennis Allen and make a midseason change. Um but the other part of that question, which is would you promote Kubiak, I find that harder to believe. Uh, generally speaking, if you have a failed coaching staff, you don't promote a member from the failed coaching staff to be the head coach. When you see promotions, it's generally if someone retires or leaves on their own accord. Uh, look at, and that's more common in college, naturally, because NFL head coaches don't leave. Like if you get an NFL head coaching job, you keep it because there's only 32 of them. But you know, Jim Harbaugh leaves Michigan; they promote Sharon Moore, the, the popular assistant sometimes is is the guy who you see get promoted. We saw Barry Odom, you know, when Gary Pinkle at Missouri retired, Barry Odom was the defensive coordinator who got promoted. I think that's more common in the college game. You don't typically see that in the NFL. I know there is an example of that with Antonio Pierce right now in w w with the Raiders, who was the interim head coach and then got that job on a full-time basis. I, I just, that is the exception, not the rule, and I don't think that's what would happen. I think... If you do get to a point, if this season for the Saints does unravel, and that's a premature conversation and one that, I mean, we can have because this is a talk show. We talk about things. It's, it's a guy who asked a question. I think is a, it's an interesting question to answer, and so we talk, we'll talk about it. If you do get to that point in the season where you make that decision, it is regardless of what happens with, with if Kubiak were the interim, it's hard to imagine – not having some type of, of overhaul of the entire organization. But it's also hard to imagine that happening considering the contract that you've given Derek Carr and the fact that you are financially bound at least for next year. And if you did want to shed him for 26, you would have to eat $28 million against the cap that year. So it's just, it's just not a good situation. This is, it's just to reiterate, this is the situation that has arisen as a result of going all in being fiscally irresponsible and going all in to try to win at the end of the Breeze era, which, again, this isn't revisionist history. This isn't hindsight 2020. I was okay with them doing that. I was okay going all in to win a championship because even if what happened in Denver where they went all in with Peyton Manning for that, that short window, they went to two Super Bowls, won one of them, and since Peyton Manning's been gone, they haven't been back to the playoffs in a decade. And they've, they've drafted quarterbacks that they thought could be their franchise. Uh, who's the big, tall kid from Memphis they drafted? Is that guy even in the league anymore? You know what I'm talking about? What was that guy's name? This is kind of the point. Maybe they found it now with Bo Nix. They, they tried to go all in with, with Russell Wilson. That was devastating. We'll see if Nix and Sean Payton can get this thing right. What was his name? Paxton Lynch. Yeah, that was it. Paxton, Paxton Lynch. Lynch. I mean, they've, they've swung and miss on quarterbacks. So... There's never a guarantee there, but they've been trying to get it right for a decade. But would you take it? Of course you would. What was that? All right. Uh, it's another reason why I would tell you also, um, I think this weekend or whatever happens for this window while Spencer Rattler plays is uh, potentially franchise altering. And I, I don't mean for that to be hyperbole. I mean it sincerely. Like, the only way out of a terrible quarterback contract is to hit on a young, inexpensive quarterback. For example, the San Francisco 49ers paid Jimmy Garoppolo. They used a, the number three overall pick on Trey Lance. Missed horribly on both. But because they hit on a seventh-round pick, they're okay. Because they're paying... Brock Purdy, what, 700K? <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. They had their franchise quarterback to pay him nothing. 
So you can like you can eat like the Philadelphia Eagles. Now they've paid Jalen Hurts, but you can eat that Carson Wentz contract because you hit on Jalen Hurts. And so if the Saints have found something here with Spencer Rattler, and I have no idea if they did, and I don't know that one game or two games is going to tell us that. But this is why it's potentially franchise altering. Because you whiffed on this car contract, and yeah, you whiffed on it. You committed $100 million to a guy that's a mid-quarterback. If all of a sudden a a rookie fifth-round pick comes in and proves he can be your franchise like Kirk Cousins did in Washington when they used a fifth-round pick on him and that effectively ushered out RG3, like Dak as a fourth-round pick in Dallas which softened the blow of Romo at the end of his career, then yeah. like you, Then you can dig yourself out of your financial mess when you don't have all that money sunken into, into your quarterback. So for a lot of reasons, I understand why fans are excited about this weekend with, with Spencer Rattler having his opportunity. We'll see how he does. Okay, y'all, it's after further review. Brought to you by First South Farm Credit. If you're thinking of buying land, your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. First South Farm Credit has been first in agriculture since 1916. I mean, every farmer who listens to the show, like, you know who First South Farm Credit is. But what many of you may not know is how much of their business is recreational property. It's the the 100 acres for your hunting property in Mississippi, the the 20 acres to build your family's dream home in Clinton. That's so much of what they do at First South Farm Credit. And just in the last two weeks, I was talking to, to Ben and Tim over at First South Farm Credit. We had lunch last week. And they were telling me just in the last two weeks, they've done $200 million in loan modifications. If you're locked in at a certain rate and rates go down and they can modify your loan to get you a low rate, they'll call you and tell you, hey, I can save you money. And they'll they'll modify your loan. Just great people to work with. It's First South Farm Credit. Your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. Visit firstsouthland.com. That's firstsouthland.com. All right, let's see if Chris Phillips from SEC Unfiltered has gotten off the plane in New Orleans yet. It's AFR. AFR. Rouse's is the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's.com, Rouse's.com. Head to the weekend, y'all. It is a football weekend. You know that in Tiger Stadium, home game for the Tigers, home game for the Saints. If you're going to be tailgating for either, make Rouse's part of your tailgate. Remember, if you want those Rouse's tailgate trays, fruit trays, cheese trays, sandwich trays, maybe you want tailgate platters, ribs, chicken, brisket, whatever, all the sides, They can take care of it for you. Call in your order, swing on into Rouse's, pick it up, take it to the tailgate, you're done. It's at Rouse's, and they got everything else that you'd want as well. All your snacks, your chips, your dips, your sweets, all the beverages for the kids and the adult beverages, great craft beer selection and the wine selection at Rouse's, unmatched. Remember their buy four, save more program. The more wine you buy, the more you save, give you an opportunity to try a lot of wines that maybe you otherwise wouldn't even uh, have an opportunity to try. It's at Rouse's. The official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints, Rouse's. It feels like home. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing. Healthcare for your lifestyle. Learn more at decisioncriticalbr.com. Unfortunately, no uh, Chris Phillips. He's uh, currently on the descent. Hey, do you turn uh, uh, into New Orleans? Chris Phillips, SEC Unfiltered, was supposed to join us. They were supposed to land in New Orleans at 5.15. He was going to get off the plane and join us at 5.30. Um, when do you turn your phone off of airplane mode? Like, do you wait till you land and you're, like, wheels on the ground? Or do you, like, wait till you're starting the descent? Or do you put your phone in airplane mode at all? Yeah, no, I, I do put my phone on airplane mode. Um, I normally turn it back on whenever... We're on the ground, like after after you land. You land, Paulie. Yeah. I do turn it on, but I usually kind of forget about it, and then I just once I realize it, turn it back on. It's usually like when I'm already out of the airport. Oh man! Oh really? Yeah. I see. I'm so addicted to my phone. It's it's impossible for me to to wait. Like I, I would literally rather somebody steal my wallet, like punch me in the face and steal my wallet. Don't steal my phone. Take my cash, my credit cards, all of it, driver's license. Take all of that. Do not steal my phone. That's how addicted I am to my phone. Um, I do put it on airplane mode because typically I'm flying with Erica and she's scared. She thinks that if it's not on airplane mode, you're going to scramble the plane, like all this stuff, and you're just and we're going to crash. That's her fear. I'm like, mm-hmm. 
that's that's so absurd. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. With you know, a hundred and fifty people on this plane, everybody using devices. Like, yeah, this is just a ploy from the airlines to make you buy their Wi-Fi. Yeah, with thousands of flights every day, and they're charging you eight bucks for the Wi-Fi. It's a it's pretty good. It's like Apple screwing everybody on the plugs on on the sure. phones and everything. Every phone that comes out, there's a new plug. Why do they do that? To make you buy the new damn plug. Exactly. It's, it's really smart. Um, I thought uh, you were maybe go- a, a smidge unethical, but smart. You know what? I thought you were going to go with them uh, making your battery crap out after that too. after a few years. That's yeah. oh, my Apple Watch is dead. Yeah, see, there you go. My Apple Watch is dead. Today. Time for a new one, Scott. So this has been happening. Um, my I charge it overnight. Put it on. I was. I put my my Apple Watch on at 6 a.m. I was in my parish construction and roofing shout-up marketing meeting. About 9.45 today, I got the little 10% battery. I'm like, hmm. Four hours, huh? Yeah, that's all, all you get now. Got it. That's it. Um, so, but, um, yeah, I, I just thought about that. because So, he, he te- Chris texted me while he was, he's like, we're on the descent, and I just got service. So, clearly, he never turned his... Airplane mode on. That's true. So he he, yep. he got it when he was on the descent. Anyway, um, by the way, dude, just get the free texting on the plane. You can text on the planes now. Yeah, you can. Oh, you okay, so I'm leaving here and going to curbside to do scone and tea. Yep. Use will be there. Yep. Do you remember the first 10 minutes of the show last week? Yep. I do. Uh, it was you and T-Bob arguing about Jalen Milrow and his performance against Georgia. So I would add one caveat to that. I don't know necessarily that it was me and T-Bob arguing. I was trying to start the show, and he just blurted out some nonsense about me and the sunken cost fallacy about the Bama's burning and everything um, because they had lost to Georgia. And as I've continued to point out, like winning mass deficiencies – and with Alabama, you are ignoring all these very clear signs about Kalen DeBoer. Uh, blowing a 17-point lead in the Pac-12 championship game last year. Blowing a double-digit lead against Texas. Do you remember how much they collapsed at the end of that game in the Sugar yeah. Bowl? Like, they were coasting. And their clock mismanagement at the end of that game gave Texas two possessions late. And on the final play from the 13-yard line, Texas had a pass into the end zone to beat Washington, which would have capped a, an epic collapse by Washington. They were tied in the fourth quarter. They went a one-score game in the fourth quarter against South Florida. Blew a 28-point lead at home against Alabama. Like, this is the Kalen DeBoer. Like, there's a large enough sample size that says that's what he is. You're going to win games because you have good players and all that stuff. But there's going to be a lot of those head-scratching ones as well. And it bit him in the ass against Vanderbilt. So I'm just curious, after Jalen Milrow, who, let's see, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, they lost to Vandy. Uh he had no pocket awareness, got got hit and fumbled at midfield, which led to a touchdown. Uh, threw a pick six as well in the ball game. Um, so that's two, that's two touchdowns accounted for by Vanderbilt directly related to Jalen Milrow uh, in a game that was a five point game. Um, we still good with Jalen Milrow as in uh, as a great. And by the way, again, Milrow was two deep balls in this game that were. Poorly underthrown. The 58-yarder to Ryan Williams where he literally, both of them, literally had to stop and come back to the football. And then the other one to Jeremy Bernard, the Washington transfer, had to stop, come back, and jump for the football. Uh, that was that was 110 of his 310 yards. Poorly thrown balls where his receivers made plays. Listen, Jayla Milrow, say it again. He's a dynamic athlete. A lot of games he plays, he's going to be the best athlete on the field. And his ability to run, by the way, five carries for, uh, no, let's see. I think he had 10 yards rushing in the game against Vandy. He was um, he was seven for 10. Seven rushes for 10 yards against Vandy. Uh, he's going to beat a lot of teams with his feet. His really athletic wide receivers are going to make a lot of plays on poorly thrown balls because he's not a very good passer of the football. And uh, I am just kind of thinking, like, should I? What should I do, Muse? Like, should I just? I mean, should tonight? I like? Should I be passive aggressive with it? Should I not bring it up? Should I go ham on him? I mean, he like, oh, out the gate was all. If I've done my job correctly, 
If you look up the sunken cost fallacy, there's a picture of Matt Moscone. Like, that's how he started the show last week. Yeah. My guy loves himself a sunken cost fallacy. He was talking about it again today. He says that all the time. He loves it, man. He He says it all the time. He loves it so much. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think you absolutely have to bring it up. And he says correlation and causation all the time. They don't mean the same thing. Um, No, the saying is correlation does not always mean or equal causation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's... Anyway, I'm saying um, those are two things he says all the time. The well, yeah, yeah. cost fallacy and the correlation causation. We're talking about T-Bob for those who don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I was going to say, I mean, you absolutely have to bring it up. If I were you, I would just kind of like, if you, I mean, you lead the show, unfortunately, but like the best thing to be, to be is like just to bring it right out of the shoot, kind of like he did last, last week. But I was trying to start the show last I week. know. But and that, he interrupted with that. I wasn't going to talk about that. We were going to get there eventually. But that's what I mean. Like, it would have been, it'd be good if, like, you could set it up that way somehow where you're able to, like, interrupt him. Maybe maybe just save it for a point in the show where he's making a point and then just, yeah. you know, you could do that. But I think it has, absolutely has to be brought up. Oh, of course it's going to be brought yeah, up. Yeah, I mean that. It's just to what degree do I do it? I just can't wait for them to keep losing. Like, they're going to lose to Tennessee in a couple weeks. And I think they're going to lose in Baton Rouge as well. Ooh. So... Um, yeah, it's Kalen Miles. Like, he's going to lose Kalen his- Miles. Yeah. <laughs> Kalen Miles. Uh, like, those people are, are in for an immense amount of frustration. Like, that's... Like, just take the logo off the helmet for a minute. <laughs> take the numerals off the helmet for a minute. Uh, and just think think about what I just laid out for you. It ain't that hard to understand. Like, this is what he was at Washington. Won a lot of games. Very good coach. But there are are liabilities. And by the way, there are liabilities with every coach because every coach isn't Nick Saban. So you are are going from the greatest coach ever to a guy who has an awful lot of liabilities. And you know who else ain't Nick Saban? Kane Womack, their defensive coordinator. No, he's not. Um, I... I don't know if I want to say this. Suffice to say, there were a lot of people in the coaching profession, high-ranking people in the coaching profession, that were flabbergasted at the complete and total lack of a defensive adjustments by Alabama in that football game. To Diego Pavia and uh, Vanderbilt's offense. Just saying. All right, we're brought to you by Shaw Bills. Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. Hey, come to Scone and T. T-Bob and I will be over at uh, Curbside here in just a little bit. We'll go live at 7 o'clock. You can watch us on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube or Facebook. Or come just join us, man. Weather's going to be gorgeous. Come have a burger and a beer. Hang out at curbside. Bring the family. We're out there on the patio. It's all fenced in. Kids can rip and run. Have a good time. They put the show on in the speakers. So come hang out with us over at curbside. All right, Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com with locations all over South Louisiana. You know where to find them from Morgan City up to Baton Rouge to West Baton Rouge to the Lafayette and the Cadiana. If you need tires, you want to buy name brand tires at wholesale prices, you go to Shaw Bills. That's just where you go. You buy the best tires on the road at the cheapest price possible. Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. Voted by Modern Tire as the dealer of the year, Miss Beth Barron, that just came out because of their commitment to excellence and serving others. It's Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com. Shaw Bills. We keep you rolling. Okay, y'all, final break, staring you right in the face. It's a Thursday AFR presented by Decision Critical, decisioncriticalbr.com. We'll come back. We'll do Otter Locks. Baseball game is underway. Um, Seeing for a score update. Uh, Guardians with an early 1-0 lead, bottom of the second, and we'll get Otter's take on Thursday night football as well. Got some uh, college football tonight, so we'll see if the Otter's got any plays. Stay with us. It's AFR. After further review. Keep mentioning that little chill in the air, y'all, especially when you wake up in the morning. When temps get into the upper 50s, low 60s, you know fall is here. Winter's around the bend, which means it's time to call River City's one-hour air. Now, if you're like me, and if you're a member of the River City one-hour air maintenance club, the membership club, they'll call you like they do me to say, Mr. Moscone, it's time to schedule your preseason heater safety check. If you're not part of the membership club, you should be because being part of the membership club gives you complimentary service. So your AC tune-up, and your heater safety check, those are complimentary uh, annual uh, services. But if you're not a member, mention the Moscona Special. They'll save you 30 bucks off the heater safety check, and this is something you have to do. Make sure your unit is safe and efficient for the coming cold weather, and also it'll extend the life of your unit. It's like an oil change for your car. 
It's River City's one hour air, 752 0001. 752 0001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing, healthcare for your lifestyle. Learn more at decisioncriticalbr.com. Dallas Reds, we come. Final segment here on a Thursday edition of AFR. All right, it's fine. We're betting on tonight. Time for Outer Locks. Outer Locks. All right, time to win some money. Presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. I think it's safe to say that I won the bet. Otter, how are you? What's up, Matt? Um, you know, getting ready for a little scone and tea tonight. Watch football, a little outdoor action over at curbside. Gonna be a beautiful night. And uh oh, nice. football tonight, nice. man. Lot. How about that rocking chair last night with Jacksonville State? Give my man a ding over there. <laughs> Love to see that. Laying 21 in a hook, no sweat whatsoever. Um, lot on the docket tonight, man. We got baseball and we got uh college football, NFL. What uh what are we perusing tonight? Uh let's get the uh the 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 um what is it the uh, coastal carolina and james madison game james madison after being the highest scored team in the country consecutive weeks 70 against uh, north carolina 63 the following week they get upset against two monroe you monroe's better first yeah. year head coach four and one but um but uh it, it's still that 63 and 70 consecutive weeks that still has the public driving this number up a little bit we're gonna take coastal carolina very small but plus the seven and a half in that one all right, Coastal Carolina plus seven and a half. Uh, don't like anything on, on the uh, the Yankees, Kansas City. Uh, if anything, if you got to bet it, take the under. Under is just cruising along again, 2-0-1 uh, last, yesterday. So the unders, again, are uh, are dominating uh, postseason baseball. So if you got to take that, take the under. I think Kansas, I think the, the, the Yankees probably won the series last night beating Lugo. I mean, you know, he left with a 2-2, a 2-2 game. But uh, Giancarlo, mm-hmm. you should know that. He hadn't been hitting too much, but he did last night. Gave the game winning home run. My favorite bet, though, is in the NFL tonight. And right. we're going with Seattle Seahawks. Uh, just reputation line here. I mean, branding. People are betting San Francisco no matter what it is. San Francisco's 2-3. and three. Um, I mean, if they don't get them early, they, they're they front four. It wears down two. A double-digit lead blown in the fourth quarter against the Rams, the beat-up Rams, and then uh, Arizona last week. Seattle, uh, Seattle catching three and a half at home. To me, this is a pick 'em game. Give me the three and a half in Seattle at home tonight. All right, Otter, uh, you're on the Guardians as well, right? You gave that out to Hunt on, on yeah. uh, LouisianaSports.net earlier. Yeah, one nothing, but uh, Detroit threatening. Bases loaded, no body out on a couple of walks and a base hit here uh, in uh, in early innings. So, so I didn't play it earlier. Is there any value? The it's it, let's see, it's all it's one one now. Um, uh, second and third, one out. Um, it's just back on the board. Guardians. Um, Let's see, the money line's off the board. The run line is minus 220. Uh, just trying to see if there's any in-game value here. What do you think? Uh, what, what's, what's the uh, money line? I'm sorry. Well, it's right off, it, well, it's off the board right now, but it's uh, it's it's taken off. It was at plus 210 on the Guardians. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I get it. We're behind probably about 45 seconds here. So, I mean, I've got to see what happens. Yeah. Okay. And probably that's, what the, uh, that's why they're taking it off the board as yeah. well. So... Uh, and there is – that's going to drop right. a run. So Not sure if it's going to get inning, the uh, runner to third. So innings so over, one, one. minus uh, – so you can get the Guardians right now at uh, at minus 115 on the run on the money line. The innings over, you're showing? Yeah, they're going to the top of the third. Nobody out. Okay, okay. That's how far behind the TV is. That was just the first out. So I guess he gets uh, <laughs> an inning, inning ending double play. And I mean, this is what it's about. I mean, and we try and teach people all the time. The TV is so far behind. But, uh, you know, wait till stoppages of play to get an accurate read when you're trying to yeah. end game. Okay, so uh, so we like the Guardians then at, at minus 115. Uh, yeah, I would take the Guardians, yeah. All right, end good game. game. All right, perfect. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, let's see, Football Friday, Rafino's tomorrow. Football Friday, um, you know, uh, Dixon and uh, and Charlie. 
to start off at 10 a.m. Uh, ben Mintz was scheduled to uh, do a segment with us at um, at uh, 11 o'clock, but he can't find a ride from the New Orleans airport in time. So One minute Mincy, remaining. So, God you know. bless Mincy. Uh, it'll, <laughs> it'll be a good day. Have Enjoy it. Uh, always great energy over at uh, Rafino's on a football Friday. We'll be listening. Thanks, Otter. We've been hot, man. We've been hot. We've been kicking it. Uh, Charlie and I both 4-1 and one last week, so eh, lock on wood. We'll see if we can uh, keep it going. We'll get the picks up at LouisianaSports.net as well. Thanks, Otter. All right, good luck. Be well. It's uh, AFR brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center, 924-2020, 924-2020. Otter is a Williamson Eye Center patient as well. You want to see 2020? The Williamson Eye Center can help. Call 924-2020, 924-2020, Williamson-Eye.com. Eye care, eye wear, eye surgery. Dr. Blake Williamson, he's just the best. The Williamson Eye Center, Williamson-Eye.com. All right, uh, that's going to do it for us here. Been a really good show. Uh, Thursday's AFR is presented by Decision Critical Concierge Nursing, uh, decisioncriticalbr.com. If you miss anything, AFR On Demand, podcast, or YouTube. Muse Polly, thanks. See you tomorrow at 3. After further review. Brought to you by Parish Construction and Roofing, parishbuilt.com. Do business with someone you know. That's me. That's Ryan Terrio, Richard Tilley. That's Joe Morales. That's Trent Davis. Their whole staff over at Parish Construction and Roofing. And man, Tell you what, one of the things we had our, you know, we have our, our marketing meeting every week on Thursdays. And one of the things that we were really just hammering on today is um, how fantastic um, Matt Pearson is. He's our new commercial manager, our commercial roofing division manager. You know, Matt spent 30 years in roofing all over the Southeast uh, from Florida now at, here with us at, uh, at Parish and points in between. And the guy just loves what he does too, man. There's nothing as far as a commercial roof that he hasn't seen. It's funny, we're, on, we're all on a group text, and Matt will send us a text at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. He's on a roof. Just, man, I love this stuff. Y'all, y'all are sleeping, getting ready for college football. I'm out of here working, but he loves it, man. So if, uh, if it's new construction or you need a repair, we'd love to help you out. Parish Construction and Roofing. Go to parishbuilt.com, parishbuilt.com.